Hi, everyone. So with VMware Container Service Extension, which is actually a great way to spin out Kubernetes cluster as a self-service in vCloud Director, in the earlier version of it, we had a lot of cloud providers requesting to add a native user interface to it. Uh, earlier versions before 2.6, you had actually to use the command line to actually go and deploy Kubernetes clusters using the VMware Container Service Extension unless if actually you acquired a third party that offer the UI into it. Uh, as, of really, as of version 2.6 and higher now, we added the capability actually to add the user interface to vCloud Director. It's now natively a part of the VMware Container Service Extension. And in this particular video, I'm gonna show you a quick demo of VMware Container Service Extension 2.6.1, a new UI and a few other capabilities in there. If you're curious how to install a VM, a VMware Container Service Extension 2.6.1, I have actually documented the full procedure in my blog at this particular URL. If you don't wanna type this URL manually, all you have to do is actually, if you go to my blog, uh, you can actually, if you go to my blog and just search for, for the name of the article, uh, VMware Container Service Extension, you will find the post. At the moment, it's actually the first post in my blog, so it's quite easy to find and to use uh, as needed. So you can actually easily see it. It's all the way done uh, from installing the CentOS 8.1 uh, to the way, till the end and getting the UI up and running. So you can follow that step by step, get ready and get it up and running for your demo POC or whatever need uh, that you have with it. All right, that has been said. Let's look at a quick demo of what uh, the container service extension look like. So this is actually the normal UI interface of an end customer. Uh, here I actually have a, an ad, a tenant I call it CSA. And as you can see, this is the normal interface where you can actually could have you normally used it to deploy your VMs and other services of vCloud Director. To access the container service extension, we have to come to is the more drop down menu, cube container and clusters. Now, as you can see here, I could actually have, I already have one Kubernetes container cluster called test 05 I have deployed from earlier. Now, if I wanted to deploy a new one, all I have to do is just hit the add button in here, choose which org VDC I want to deploy to, hit next. Then after that, as you can see here, the only thing I really need to supply is the name of that Kubernetes cluster. So I could so call it test 08. Now the rest of the information is optional, but I'd assume in most cases, customers have some specific info they wanna put in there. So how many worker nodes, I wanna do two worker nodes. How many CPUs I'm gonna have per worker node, I wanna have one. Uh, how much RAM you wanna have, I'm gonna do about two gigabit of RAM. Storage policy. Uh, here if I want an NFS to be enabled and deployed with it, that will actually deploy a separate NFS node. Uh, that could be consumed from inside my worker nodes. As well, it will actually allow, if I wanted to do a rollback, uh, in case I wanna go back to previous version or so on during upgrade. So, hit next. Here I choose which network I wanna to deploy to. Here I choose which kind of template I wanna deploy from. So, the nice part about CSE, it allows you to actually have multiple templates with different versions of Kubernetes and you're, customer could actually uh, decide which particular version they wanna use. So let's say I'm using this particular one in here. I hit next, it asks me to review the information, hit finish in a couple of minutes, a new Kubernetes cluster will be deployed and ready for me to use. As you can see here at the bottom, it's deploying that. To save time during this quick demo, I actually have already provisioned earlier a Kubernetes cluster using the tool in a very similar way to what I just have shown you. So. Now let's actually click on it just to see what information and what things you can do inside the user interface. So here actually this page is actually show you the details of your Kubernetes cluster, how many nodes you have, what the specs and a few other information, what versions of CSE was used to provision it, what version of Kubernetes it's doing, and is it deployed to PKS or directly to a VApp? So when say native, it's being di di uh, directly deployed to a VApp. In the notes tab here, as you can see, I could see a list of my nodes that I have at the moment. 
Uh, the other thing actually I could add extra nodes if I decided to. So if I actually want to add extra nodes in here, all I have to do is click the add button in here. And it will allow me actually to go and add how many worker nodes I want to add. So let's say I wanted to add one extra worker node, one virtual CPU, how much RAM I want to add in there, uh, what storage profile to use. Very similar to the interface of actually provisioning a new Kubernetes cluster. But this is just going to invoke and add one worker node to the cluster to kind of scale out, uh, scale out my installation. If I hit finish, it will actually go and create an extra node in there. All right. Uh, the other thing which I really love about this is the download kube configuration link in here. So rather than actually having the infrastructure admin to go and create these kube config files manually uh, to give them to the developer, uh, it's actually we're saving them that amount of work uh, by actually auto generating the kube config file. So the, the service admin or the IT ops of that particular tenant does not have to learn too much about Kubernetes or work with as much to be able actually to spin a Kubernetes cluster and provide access to the developer. In a second, I'll come back here, download the config file, and show you how a developer could easily take it and use it with his kubectl, and just start using kubectl as he would do in daily basis. Before we do that, though, let's actually uh, show you another capability in the, in the container service extension 2.6.1. Uh, which is actually allow the end customer to upgrade their container service extension, uh, their Kubernetes clusters. So the right uh, window is here. So as an end customer, and as long as they have access to the VCD CLI at the service provider, they actually could execute commands to upgrade their Kubernetes cluster. So actually, before I upgrade my Kubernetes cluster, let's make sure I try to test and make sure uh, what the upgrade plan or path available for my Kubernetes cluster. So I run this particular command in here. And as you can see, I'm running uh, 1.16 uh, 1 in this one. So my next Kubernetes release version and upgrade available to me is 1.17. And if I decided to upgrade, all I have to do is run uh, this following command, which is I'm not going to do in the in, in here, but it just good to show that's what the command is going to be. The reason I'm going to do it, I want to use this cluster uh, to demo in a second how a developer will connect to it. Uh, so rather my cluster here being the test 05, for example. And if I execute it back, it will actually start the upgrade of the Kubernetes cluster in here. All right. Meantime, let's look actually at downloading this particular configuration file in here. So as you can see, it have downloaded it in here. And now I could go and down, take that particular configuration file. Now I have decided on the folder where I want to have my configuration file in and I added it earlier uh, to my execution path. I have kubectl already installed in here as well. Uh, so actually, let me add this configuration file to it. Right, so I can actually change this to .vaca. This is my old existing file. I'm just going to keep it there. All right, so I'm going to call this particular file now, which is the file I want to use with my kubectl as config test zero five dot y uh, yaml okay and that's it that. all right so now i have my new configuration file up, uh, ready in here so the next step i'm going to have to do I'm, I'm actually using windows in here so i'm going to have to set my environment value variables uh to use it so i'm actually in linux the command might be a little bit different but uh for now i'm just going to show that here uh just in case you need, all right, a second. So, that, so I'm gonna set up my environment variable, cube config equal, and now I have to put the path to where I have put my uh, config file, which is kubectl config. So as you can see, as you remember, that's actually where we have put the file in. And now this is actually not zero one, let's keep config zero. Okay, zero five is the one. 
I want it. Let's just make sure we got the right one. Config is zero five HTML. Yeah, that's the right one here. So now I have just to confirm that actually uh, my variable was configured and saved correctly. Let's list it. As you can see now, my configuration file is the one is in that particular variable. So now, as that has been settled, now my my uh, developer could actually use kubectl freely, just as if he was using it uh, anywhere else, as just a, any normal Kubernetes cluster. As you can see now, I could execute kubectl and try things. So maybe let's try uh, a quick command in here to maybe uh, create a, a pod. Uh, for nginx and uh, yeah, let's just try to run that kubectl run dash dash image equal Next, I don't know. I'm just gonna call it ab04 here and then I'm just gonna tell it to, to go port 80 All right, so now actually uh, the bot have created. So if I do a uh, cube cattle get bot, for example, as you can see, I could actually start seeing the bots I have in there and so on. So uh, all, all of that, I mean, uh, you can actually uh, consume and use just like the normal way uh, you, you will do. So if I actually want to try to check uh, the name spaces I have and so on. So you use it as you would use any any kubectl before, just like you're connecting to a pure Kubernetes cluster in there. Uh, another cool uh, tool that we actually had in, in VMware and actually we open sourced it, right, is Octant, which is, if I run that in here, uh, because I have the kubectl already configured as an environment variable, it's gonna pick it up directly. And uh, now it's beside it as well. Give me a visual presentation of my environment. So I could easily could see uh, my different deployments that I have in there, the different pods, the different replica sets I have, uh, the different services and, and so on. So all that come as a nice uh, graphical presentation of the environment. I could actually go to one of these pods and get more info as well about it. If I click on it, or deploy, sorry, that's, that was actually deployment over there so I could get more information in here. Uh, similar thing, if you go to the pods, uh, you can get a lot of nice information and what network it's running, what resources it's using, and all that kind of things. What metadata is there? One of the real cool things I like is the resource viewer, which actually give me a very nice explanation of what service that pod is connected to, what service account it's using, what kind of replica set, uh, and so on. So it actually make uh, nice uh, make make things much easier to visualize. Uh, here you get the YAML file where actually you can see. Uh, what kind of the configuration was in there. Of course, this is not necessarily meeting the YAML file that the user executed to create it, but it's actually uh, what actually would been required to go and simulate an actual deployment exactly with the settings. So it's, it's nice to look at. It's gonna give you all uh, the different fields so you can kind of figure out what's going on uh, for that particular uh, bot. Uh, logs here, we can, can see some logs in there. Uh, terminal where you get a terminal directly to that actually uh, particular pod, which is really cool and nice. I mean, you don't actually have to run any complex command or anything that's uh, crazy to get there. Uh, same thing you get for Ingress stuff, the jobs, the deployments. Uh, very, really nice uh, and handy tool to do. No namespaces, all that kind of things. So you can see all the namespaces in your environment uh, and so on. So I, I, I like the tool very, very often, and I use it quite often just to visualize things in my environment. Uh, 